Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Software Architecture in New York City. I'm here with Thomas Krauss. Thomas, how are you doing? Good, Mike. How are you? Good. So you're with Mesosphere. Correct. And you guys have kind of this new emerging thing, a data center OS. Right. Can you unpack that a little bit and explain sure. what that means? Yeah. So it's a relatively new concept uh, introduced a few years ago in open source form. We now have a proprietary enterprise version. Um, the data center OS is an operating system for your data center. It's an abstraction that takes advantage of all the compute resources within your data center, pools them, abstracts them, and provides a common API, CLI, and UI to manage things at much greater scale. And what would be a benefit of having that all done by one, one system? Right. W what happens today is you have modern architectures from an application perspective are typically distributed, um, very small footprint, modular, loosely coupled components um, that aren't able to be very well managed in traditional ways. So traditionally we have management systems that will talk to a discrete operating system. It has an IP address. It has a full OS that you can install an agent on. Today's modern architectures don't really lend themselves to that type of management at scale. Um, so the DC DCOS or data center operating system actually allows you to efficiently provision, manage the life cycle of, decommission, scale, uh, monitor the health of these applications. So is scaling quick and easy or? Very easy, yeah. So, oh. so we can do it. We have a UI and a CLI. Either one, I can scale um, either uh, an application that I've developed in Python or Ruby in a matter of seconds to thousands of nodes. So now how do developers, are there a lot of tools for developers to build apps on top of this data center OS or? Uh, yeah, the, the common abstraction is still there. So the way you would develop these applications isn't going to change for a lot of these developers. Um, the development pipeline might change, so you might change how you're provisioning them, how you're moving them from dev to production, mm -hmm. but the actual development of those applications doesn't have to change. In fact, we have tools like Jenkins or Marathon, which will allow those developers to easily develop and then publish to DCOS those applications and then scale them back, manage the versioning of those applications and all those types of things. So is it fair to say a developer's uh, tool suite will work building apps on top of Correct. the data center OS? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and you call it DCOS? DCOS. DCOS, okay. So are you seeing this as a really big thing for data companies or is this for any software company or That's what types, uh, types of companies are like looking at this? Yeah, so we've seen primarily three use cases. We've seen big data and data analytics, things like Apache Spark, Cassandra, Kafka, HDFS. We've seen developer agility workloads, so things that I just mentioned like Marathon or Jenkins, and then we've seen even container orchestration. So a lot of these container technologies, microservices in general, haven't really, um, they've evolved to production grade. The management and operations tools really haven't evolved at the same pace. Um, one of the problems that we saw very well is the ability to manage distributed systems or containers at scale. Okay, so the DevOps tools haven't kept up, is that? The DevOps tools are, are okay. The management at scale of hundreds or thousands of Docker containers or native Linux containers um, is still a big challenge and one of the big barriers to adoption of container technologies in production. And so where, how do you think that gets f evolving over the next six months or 12 months? I mean, is that going to... Is it going to get better? Is it's it going to get better. I mean, we're, we are certainly at the forefront of addressing those challenges. Um, other technologies like Kubernetes um, and, and some of these other folks are trying to address the same challenges. Um, we're taking kind of a broader perspective to operate your data center, not just manage containers, although managing containers is something we do very well um, and, and one of our use cases that we kind of rally around. So if you were to fast forward, let's say 12 months from now. Right. Um, what would you like to see Mesosphere doing in the market with all of your customers? What, what would be the thing that you could say, we've done this better than anyone else? Right, I think establishing standards. So we've done a good job at kind of getting the open source community to rally around our technologies and contribute and feel like they're a part of the development of this product. Um, I think once we establish a DCOS as a standard, which it's quickly becoming, um, that would be my ultimate goal. So a common infrastructure endpoint and abstraction layer that you can run in AWS, you can run on-prem, um, you can define an application for DCOS and easily port that over and give it to another company or development shop in India and have them run that same application because DCOS is a standard. Excellent. So are we also going to see 
really large deployments? Is that something happening now or? It's happening now. It's yeah. already happened, yeah. So, okay. so that's one of the key advantages of running DCOS. It's built on top of open source Apache Mesos, um, scales to tens of thousands of physical nodes. Um, and that's one of the big differentiators of our technology uh, towards others is that we built scale in from the ground up. So the technology scales, it's battle tested, it's proven at very large companies, web companies, as well as service providers. Um, and that's one of the big differentiators we have today. So, million dollar question. If a large company is evaluating a new operating system like this, right. what is the main thing that they're gonna get by choosing DCOS? Um, so, I think from an operational standpoint, so a lot of the folks that come and talk to us initially are some of your strategic thinkers at these large enterprises. You have some of these folks that are like platform architects, architecture teams, um, offices of the CEO, um, centers of excellence. These are the folks that are coming to talk of us, talk to us initially. What we're finding is the folks that are actually realizing a lot of the benefit initially are some of the operators, the data center operations teams. They have this common endpoint where they can manage and see performance and define applications, scale them, uh, move them around, define the health characteristics, the placement constraints, all of that can be done at a single layer and they typically end up benefiting the most is, is the actual data center operators. So that's the biggest thing is that they're going to see, realize is that they can move their company quicker? The initial thing, correct. The initial, okay. Correct. So Excellent. if you've got once you've standardized on DCOS and you deploy this cluster, we have the ability to run many disparate workloads, whether it's data analytics, Spark and Cassandra, whether it's a Marathon application, a Ruby application, Jenkins, MariaDB, I mean, the, the list goes on and on as far as things you can deploy here, as well as all your internally developed applications. And so this is all open source? The, the tools it's that you're using? It's based on open source technologies, so okay. yeah. Okay. So we put our own flavor on top of it, um, security, um, enterprise scale, load balancing, those types of things on top of the open source components. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Well, we look forward to your journey, Thomas. Thanks. Thank you. It's great talking to you.